This van life journey always seems to take me to amazing places and surround me with some awesome and creative and beautiful people. Today we're in Kamloops, BC. You guys remember the artist that we seen on the side of a street? Him and a friend were out there with the aerosol cans and brushes and stuff and they were painting this crazy amazing piece of artwork. Well, I'm at his place. So today we're gonna go meet the wolf man. Hey everyone, uh, it's uh, Stace the Wolf. Um, I go by Wolfman uh, on my Instagram. Um, welcome to uh, this is my home studio. I'm uh, really excited to be able to show everyone my work, have a look around, and, and enjoy what you see. Uh, really excited to have Chrome here, so yeah, let's do this. First time that I was really impacted by by art was at um, a, a, I can't remember which place I was at, but there was a, a Rembrandt painting. It wasn't the actual Rembrandt painting, but it was a print of a um, soldier wearing a helmet. I believe is that's what it was called. And I remember just staring at it, and staring at it, and staring at it. And it just made me feel like all these crazy feelings, and it was just it just moved me. With in um, so that feeling that I had when it, at when I, my first experience looking at at a piece of art that had, and it gave me such a, a strong emotional um, response was uh, uh, really captivating to me. And it was something that um, kind of stuck with me. So, I, I mean, when I was a kid, it was, I was mostly just drawing like tanks and drawing like uh, uh, knights and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't until, um, I mean, I always did that, but it was when I, when I got into skateboarding and, I, and uh, when I started high school was when I really, got into art. I had a, a fantastic art teacher that um, saw something in me and would send me home every summer with all the art supplies and I would work all summer long and then I'd come back the next year and he'd see the progression that I had made and then he believed in me. So, I mean, he would take me in the back of the art room every year and he'd say, just take everything. What, take what you want. I'm like, what do you mean? He'd say, just take everything that you can. So I would just come with boxes and load up all the art supplies, go home and work, work, work. And that, and that's what I did. I mean, that's what I spent all my time is like, I, I, I always skipped all my other classes. I was in the art room. If you ever wanted to know where Stace was, he was in the art room. That was, that's where I was and that's where I lived. And that's, and that's where the, um, the passion came in. I mean, I think I already had, I already had the passion, but that's where uh, I knew that there was something in me that was turned on that was never going to be extinguished. And that sort of fire that I had, um, you know, I went into, then I went into further studies of art. I went to art school. Um, I did that whole thing. Um, that was, that was some, some great times. So I'd learned a lot in there and it was basically, um, you know, I learned all the tools and I learned all the rules and I learned what it was to, and I ended up, I ended up, I mean, I'm an art school dropout. So I, you know, and I went off and kind of, you know, did the regular thing that everyone else does, get a job. And, um, but I continue, always continued to work on my art all, through everything else. My art has always been a, um, a constant. Yes. Of course there's peaks and valleys where, um, I wouldn't do a lot in a year or maybe two years. Um, and it's weird because I'd have this like, this incredible guilt about not about not being creative, but yet in the back of my mind, I was always like thinking about art, always thinking about oh man, like this I should I got a painting and I got a painting and I got to draw again. Um, and you can't force it; it just kind of comes. And then when it does come, it just you know explodes out of you, and and, and you push it all out, and, and you get everything out that you need to get out. And um, my personal struggles with uh, uh, mental health and with addiction. Um, sort of kind of those times in my life um there wasn't a lot of creative stuff happening i mean there was but it wasn't really anything that was um i think it was mostly just the the emotional stuff that that i uh was struggling with and um and now that i've that i'm um you know still fighting that battle but now my work is sort of um you know it's Lots of influences from lots of different artists, but for me, I think it's mostly about what I what I said earlier about me as a kid looking at that painting and um, and the feelings that I had. So that's what I want to do with my I want my art to be authentic. I want it to be real and raw and honest. And and um, if uh, addiction and that has taught me anything, it's that um, you know I've got a second chance 
here and my artwork has always been that piece that's um, brought me back. It's always kind of saved my life, really. Um, um, I, I, I say it on my Instagram, like art, it fills my lungs with life and, and, and cleanses my soul with brutality. And that's, I mean, I can't really say anything else more about it other than, and um, like that extinguished or that fire that's still lit inside me is just driving me to, to keep creating. And I think now that I sort of have a new perspective on life and I have a better understanding of myself and what's driving me and why I'm doing what I'm doing, because for the most part, I didn't know why I wanted to make art. I just did it. I didn't really have, there was no real congruence between my passion for wanting to do it and, and for what I was actually doing until I realized that I was an addict and I went through all these problems as an addict because I went through having to look at myself and deal with all these issues internally and my relationships with people and, and for myself I, I feel hard like I don't mean that um, I feel uh, like hardened I just I feel hard if I love I love freaking hard if I if I have fear I fear hard if I if I if I'm uh, sad, uh, 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 really sad. Like uh, my feelings are just, and so I'm, um, and in my work, I think that's, um, the way that I try to get it out on my work because as a, as a human being trying to communicate with my wife or my kids or anything like that, like being that emotional, that isn't always the best, <laughs> doesn't always work. So for me, um, being able to get out here and do this and try to reach out to people and try to, um, share my work with everyone that could be possibly, going through similar situations or understanding, um, you know, better, just trying to better understand like myself and what is driving me to do what I'm doing. And, um, you know, I'm not unique. It's lots of people are struggling out there. People are dying out there left, right and center. Um, addiction's killing people. It's a, it's a public health problem and it's, and, uh, I want to remove the stigma from, from that. I mean, man, there's nothing, there's, I'm not ashamed of who I am. I am who I am and I've, I've, you know, I wouldn't change anything about the way that my life has gone. Love the sound of a spray can shaking. Do that again, please. Okay. <laughs> Is that weird that that sound just like? Oh. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to bring you here into the studios of the Wolfman is because when I seen them doing the artwork on the side of the street, stuff like that really inspires me. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link that video at the end of this video here. But something about the expression and people that have no fear at all about letting whatever is going on inside of them out on any sort of a platform, whether it's doing what he's doing on a piece of paper or if it's through music or if it's through videos or singing, expression, poetry, whatever it is, I freaking love it. This guy is a freaking colorful beast and I would be insane to see what's going on inside of him. What do you think, Wolfman? You think you're black and white inside? <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not.
So do you ever think about what you paint before you paint it, or this just comes out? No, usually um, I just put the tape on and just and just go. It usually just. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, I shouldn't say that. Like, there's been times that if I'm thinking about a painting for a while or something that I want to do, but for the most part, yeah, it just, it's just spontaneous. I find that's the, uh, the best for me anyway. That's just the way I work. So it's the way it's always, and it's my hands uh, are just a, a tool of my brain, <laughs> really. What are you gonna call this one? Uh, I'm not, it's pretty simple. Weirdos unite. Yeah, <laughs> I like the sound of that one. Weirdos unite. I think this room has a whole lot of weirdo wrap all over it. Weirdo there, weirdo there, weirdo there, 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 and another weirdo right there. This is so sick, man. Thanks for letting us come in and interview and be in your studio. If you got one last thing to say to anybody out there, what would it be? Oh man, just uh, uh, if you're struggling with anything, just fight through it. Uh, you're worth it. Uh, number one, the only one, like you're the only person, the only person that knows that you're worth it is, is, is yourself. And just keep pushing through it. Do what you love. Yeah. Uh, never back down and always follow uh, your heart and you, because your heart's never wrong. And uh, uh, just stay true to who you are and never apologize for anything about who you are. Ever. I love that one. And where can they follow you? Uh, on my Instagram, uh, at Wolfman, uh, my Facebook page, uh, Wolfman Originals. And I've got a Patreon page uh, started up, but uh, it's not quite ready to launch yet, but it'll be coming. All right, man. Hey. Cheers. All right, thanks.